Welcome to Real Coaching Radio, the podcast for coaches, by coaches. We are here to teach you how to get the most out of your clients and yourself. This is where beauty meets the beast, brains meet brawn, and science meets, well, bro science. Welcome to Real Coaching Radio. Guys, welcome to today's episode of the podcast. Today, me and Mark, we talk about all things beginners in the gym. We talk, if you have never been to a gym before, what's the best approach for you? How to deal with your first session? What should you do for your first month? How do I arrange my sessions? Um, We kind of lay it all out in here. If you're a personal trainer and you have someone who comes to you and they are a beginner, we give you some tips in here on how to do it. But but the biggest thing is create enjoyment, create consistency, um, create little wins. But without any further ado, let's begin the episode. No, no, no. I suppose we could ask that question for everyone else because we've already answered it. And I know the answer. I don't think, well, I don't know if you can know the answer, can you really? I know the answer. Um, so the question w- w- which we saw, which got sent in to one of my chats and was so, um, I think it came from Twitter, was are there more doors in the world or more wheels in the world? And it's such a, like, just baffling question because now all I can see is wheels. I feel like it's got to be doors. But like, think of all the suitcases. All the, all the suitcases in the world have wheels on it. Yeah, good point. But like apart, like think think about apartment blocks and office blocks. Yeah, but then it's it's so anyway. Um, I think the only thing we can do is everyone needs to go home in their house, count how many wheels and doors they individually own, and then maybe we just like collect all that information. Well, I can't see any wheels. Suitcase. No, I can't see it. <laughs> Um, right so the question I want to ask and I think I think you'll like this one when you were younger when you were a kid yeah did you ever do anything that was just like you look back now and you're like that was probably one of the stupidest things I've ever done and like one I can't believe I ever got away with it or two I can't believe like like I even did that like, is there anything like that for when uh, you were a kid? Well, like dangerous or just like you it look back be, and you're just like, you're an idiot. It could be dangerous. It could be like you look back and you're an idiot. All right. So I remember one thing, which isn't like it definitely wasn't the most dangerous thing I've done. It's not even it's not even dangerous. But I look back at it now and just be like, there's no way in the world you were getting away with that. Like, you're an idiot. So. <laughs> I was in the living room with I think I think it was just me and my cousin and we were just dicking about with like a How old are you? Uh dunno. Thirteen, fourteen maybe. Yeah. Like I was young. Um we were just dicking around with like launching a tennis ball around the living room. And then we were in my dad's house used to have so like you come into the porch and then there's like there's a door into the hallway and there's a long hallway which like led into the living room and this door that like led into the hallway had like this big glass panel yeah so i launched this ball right yeah. and it's just like gone straight in pretty much smack in the middle of this glass panel and like shattered it <laughs> and obviously like <laughs> there's this impact point yeah so then I was like, fuck, like my dad's going to go nuts. <laughs> and um, my brother wasn't home. Okay. So then my brother came home from school. And then when my dad got back, I, I told my dad that my brother was banging on the door that hard. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, that like he'd done it. But obviously like not knowing like me now would know this that, like the impact point is on the other side <laughs> so my dad's just like do you think i'm fucking stupid did he did he like 
Did he yeah, sh- my dad was like, well, look at the impact point. Like, the impacts come from this side, not this side. Like, how, how, has, your bro- how has your brother done this? So, like, yeah, that's, not, that's one thing I always remember that because I'm just like, you're such an idiot. You've unlocked two memories for me just then. So one of them, um, very similar. My granddad bought me a, my granddad's into golf, and he bought me this, like, this little, like, chip-in kind of, I guess, net. And it was like, there was this big, it was like a big net, probably, um, if you like, I don't even know, probably like four foot wide by like six foot tall. And then it would have like holes in it and you have to try and chip yeah, kind yeah, of golf yeah, balls yeah. into it. Yeah. And like, he gave me like these plastic golf balls and like I'm chipping into it. And I was just like, I was, I'm done with these plastic ones. But like went into the garage and got out his actual golf balls. And so I'm, I'm in the back garden. I'm facing the house, right? <laughs> and there's nets, obviously, like there. And my, my granddad's got like two patio doors. So if you picture picture my house from where I'm looking at it, like is there's me on the on the ground. You have this net in front of me, and then probably like six foot behind that is where the house starts. Two patio doors. My granddad's office is above that. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, right, I'm done with plastic balls. I'm getting this now. Mind you, I'm like. I'm not even joking, like eight or something, right? So in my head, I'm like, I'm classic golf. I'm getting these. Chipped this ball. Well, I say chipped. I whacked this ball. Cut the driver out. <laughs> same, same chipper. And it hit like the plastic bit in the middle of the patio doors. And my granddad's like just stuck his head out the window, like upstairs. Like, what the, was that? And I was just like. Oh yeah, golf ain't for me, man. Like I can't. This is not for me. So there's that one. We got away with it. The next one, one of my mate had a air rifle, mm. like an, a kind of gas powered BB gun, mm. a, like metal pellet, and he, where where we used to like stand um, in his back garden. He had a he used to have a a jacuzzi, and they would put like cans on that. and We'd shoot it. And he shot and it hit the pane of glass in the garage and like just shattered it completely. So like there's pane of glass all over um, the floor and we've got to like clean it all up off of kind of his decking. So we spent like an hour and a half cleaning it up and then he's dicking around again with the gun, shoots, shoots the other pane of glass out of the window. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, mate, I ain't up when you clear that one up. Like that's your own doing now. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought yeah. I'd. I just remembered another one. Go on. Which, is pretty, which was pretty stupid. Go on. You might not know what this is because of like, your age. Do you know what a Cinque Cento is? Car? Yeah. Is the in-betweeners car? Yeah. My mate had one of them. Yeah. So obviously not on my own with a group of, I reckon there was like 10, 10 12 of us um, after a night out on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I flipped a Cinque Cento. Like fully flipped, yeah, it. like lit on its roof, like <laughs> yeah, like it's tiny. Smart like, cars does, does it like hardly that. weighs anything, yeah, and like there's like I don't know it's what on the way back from like a night out, yeah, there's like ten, twelve, <laughs> maybe more, like big strong lads. So we're just like, yeah, shall we flip it? Let's have a go. It's madness, isn't it? I just can't. I just wanted. To imagine, I just wanted to see the guy's face the next morning when he like goes to work and like goes to put his key in the door. See, like his cars upside down. In my mind, I'm like, it, now, when I, like, hypothetically, I've had friends that have flipped a smart car, hypothetically. Um, but now, I, I think I'd like to just, like, pick it up and turn it around. <laughs> Spin it. Yeah, just to see, like, the, way. the guy yeah. comes out like, hang on a minute. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Mark from Origin Series. And just quickly, I wanted to give you some information on our brand new group training program, which is Origin Essentials. So for us at Origin Series, training is all about doing the basics and doing the basics really well and getting the fundamentals nailed down when it comes to strength and fitness. This program is a group program. It's an online program so you can do anywhere in the world if you have access to a gym. And we will take you through a series of structured and progressive strength programs along with some targeted energy system work to develop your cardiovascular fitness as well. So if you're looking to get stronger and looking to get fitter, then this program is definitely for you. You should head to originseries.com and check it out. I 
was I'm thinking basically back to the learning curve of people when they train and when people kind of first start training or even like PTs when they first start training people and they think oh, like, I, like, I know everything like I'm smart and I was just thinking back to stupid things that like at the time I was like yeah it'd be all right yeah and then like, I look back on now and I'm like nah that was so stupid like why did you do that yeah um and it kind of and that's what I guess will bring us on to today's topic which Again, we're going through different avatars and different people who are kind of wanting to make sure that they're training the correct way when it comes to either setting themselves goals in the gym, but making sure they're training in the correct way to achieve whatever they want to achieve. And I think a good one is definitely someone who has never trained in a gym before. They literally never. I think, I think, I think someone who, for, for us, for example, it had it, it almost been pointless them saying that they've been to a gym. So they may have been to a gym. Um, I've had a few clients recently who have had gym membership for like four years yeah. and have probably gone less than 10 times. Yeah. And it's like, that's an expensive yeah, session yeah. each time they do go. Yeah. And every time they go, they feel like they get nothing out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to put an age to this person? Um... No, because I think we can probably discuss things that doesn't, almost regardless of the age, unless we get into like 60s and stuff. Yeah, so I think if we just, if we kind of say literally anyone to 55, mm. it gives us a good, a good range because most people can Has this person got a goal? Just, I guess general public. So okay. like. And All right. Okay. General public is good in terms of like what they, what we think they should be doing. Because what most general public want to look a little bit better, yeah. normally to lose either some weight or some body fat yeah. and to feel a bit fitter. Yeah. Like most people I know, um, if, I speak to, if I speak to, say, every single person in my family or every single person, one of my friends, they've got, everyone got the same goal. Yeah. And it is normally those things. Yeah. But say they, they have tried in the past to train or they've like been hit and miss mm-hmm. and they're like right i really want to get into training i've never really stepped foot in the gym before where should i start and yeah imagine you had this person come to you as a pt mm-hmm. where do you start with this person i would say if we're just like gonna hit the general public i would say they need to be exposed to some form of a combination of some form of strength and resistance training some form of um, maybe like more dynamic movement beyond just static strength training, if you like. So something more dynamic than a squat. Um, and some, some cardiovascular work. Okay. Where, like, I think, I think whenever I get a client come in who is brand new, I do... So I have like a consultation with them um, where it was just a chat and either that's a phone call or um, face-to-face. I then have a session which is somewhere between half hour to an hour long, depending on kind of how they move and stuff like that. And it's basically an assessment session. And in that session, I get them to squat. I teach them to hinge. Um, I get them to push and I get them to pull. Yep. So I basically do all, or I go through all four of those. Um, and the funny, the, the really interesting thing, and I think this is where we, uh, we may differ if we get someone in front of us, is I always do that session because, the, well, the first thing I'm looking for is how do you move? Yeah. Is that the same for you? Like when yeah. you get someone brand new coming in. Yeah, I want to see how they can move their body. And would you think, so those four ways of me kind of, assessing that person as such what additionally would you add to that but and would you agree with kind of like that structure yeah I, I would i would absolutely do the same i'd do like something knee dominant so hip dominant and then pushing and pulling through through the upper body um i would do exactly the same i guess the only thing i might do differently to what you do is i might add in a little bit of cardiovascular work probably at the end um or maybe 
start to challenge them towards the end of the warm up a little bit just to just to see but more than anything maybe just to see how well their cardiovascular system is working and yeah. potentially to see um not nec- not not how hard they're willing to work but to see how their body responds when things do start getting a little bit harder and that's not necessarily from a mental point of view and it, but more so you know so can they can they maintain postural positions when their heart rate is higher yeah um and just so, but the the idea for me is it's still certainly that initial initial session it's still an assessment yeah like but i'm just assessing right okay how you know probably how efficient is your aerobic system yeah and secondly what happens to your postural positions when you're moving and your heart rate is up so there's still it's still an assessment and then uh, cuz i just find it i just find it so interesting that like you can have someone come in and and it still catches me now even though i know that it's going to happen is that we would do i build someone up and on our first session we probably still goblet squatting yeah and the and it would be somewhere between 6 to 8 reps and how high someone's heart rate gets after that how yeah. heavy their breathing is after that yeah and it's just for me i'm just like even if we're doing these exercises like i couldn't necessarily or could you then still take someone in that position where we've done say three sets of eight reps on a goblet squat and in between we have to recover somewhere between 90 seconds to two minutes because mm. they're breathing so heavily yeah like would you then still go okay so we're still see how your cardiovascular system so works? if i was in that situation i i probably wouldn't um but again so for an example if i was to in a warm-up let's say i don't know let's say we stick on a bike for a couple of minutes just to you know, increase some blood flow before we do it you know that's the very first part of their warmer yeah. during those couple of minutes we can have a bit of a chat and then we'll go through some more dynamic body weight exercises to finish the warm-up like even at that point like if i was to take somebody through a little body weight routine that is just looking at increasing hip mobility increasing you know, thoracic spine mobility prior to us doing any like hinging and squatting yeah i can quite quickly see just through those three or four minutes how well someone's cardiovascular system works that's a really interesting because yeah, way of doing it if you're doing three minutes of body weight exercises and your heart rate is hitting the roof yeah yeah. I already know you don't have a very good cardiovascular system. Yeah. Okay. I don't need to put you on a, an assault bike to find that out. So that's really interesting. So as as you someone's going through a warm up, for example, like if you took that warm up just there, and you said like like give a specific warm up. Oh, let's say we just went. You know, I'd keep it like really simple. Let's say we went through like some hamstring sweeps, um, some like alternating toe taps, um possibly some body weight squats possibly some lunges depending on like how stable i can see i can see they are um stuff stuff like that learn some rotational work yeah um so those those kind of exercises but again as we progress our way through you know if i'm building you into some body weight squats and a few few walking lunges and i can see your heart rate's going up yeah i'm like well I already know how efficient your cardiovascular system is. So this is like, and this is a good way for anyone listening to one to almost like test themselves. Is kind of during the warm up, if you are doing some body weight exercises, and like the way we kind of like to do it is, um, so you'll see different terms of like kind of static stretching and dynamic stretching. If you are going to do any static stretching, make sure it's at the very very start. But then you're going to go through some like dynamic movements, like Mark said, to kind of work on kind of thoracic mobility or hip mobility, and then build your way up into like some hamstring sweeps, maybe some body weight squats, some alternating toe taps. Like if you're doing that and you're finding yourself out of breath, like that's a good, like you say, it tells you a lot that your yeah. cardiovascular system isn't that good. Yeah, and I would say that you know if if that's the situation you're finding yourself in 
I would say there's a, there's a couple of things to consider. The first thing to consider is, you know, I, w- I would probably want to do, um, I wouldn't get into any of that dynamic stuff until maybe at least, you would probably be probably three or four minutes into some sort of warm up before we got there. Okay. So, you know, we'd be either on a bike or on a road machine or something because all that's happening is remember, you've got to move through these energy systems. Yeah. So it's like it's like when you go for even if you're quite fit, it's like when you go for a run. If you don't do a warm up and you just sort of went out of the gate at the pace that you're gonna run at, your your body's gotta catch up for that oxygen demand. Yeah. So the first couple of minutes are quite uncomfortable. Yeah. So that's gonna happen to everybody. Okay. So I, I I like to give them time just like right, well let's get the aerobic system caught Water up a little bit. Right. Yep. And then get you into it. If you know we start these dynamic stretches four or five minutes into a warm up, and I'm still starting to see this now, then yeah, we we probably need to get you a little bit fitter. But then, having said that, that for somebody, their warm up could be like their conditioning. Yeah. At the same at the same time, you know, yep. I could just be like, right, well, you know, throughout your warm up. For the next, we're going to give you maybe a slightly extended warm up. We give you like a little twelve minute warm up, yeah. and it's going to be, you know, maybe like a twelve minute unwrap of a minute on a machine, a few little body weight exercises, minute on a machine, a few little body weight exercises, and you're getting two things. They're going to end up really warm, and you're going to start to increase your cardiovascular fitness. And for some people, that can that can be enough yeah. to start with. It's really interesting because I never ever thought about doing it that way to kind of to, to start to see yeah. using my cause it's funny because like I say about it all the time like we use warm ups to not only like mobilize joints and to kind of help someone with if they've got any like stability issues but we also use it as a bit of an assessment and I never thought about using it as an assessment for cardiovascular wise. Yeah, but well, to be honest, I just, the, re- the reason I started to do that was, and we've had this conversation like multiple times, like the, the you know, the, the more you go into and the deeper you go into personal training, you start to realize that actually exercises can be really quite simple. And the most complex part is, is the human being, the person that you're working with. And, you know, if you're, if you're from day one, during this assessment seeing that someone's heart rate is going up quite high in a warm-up then yeah you're potentially going to have an honest conversation with them just be like look i think one of our goals and one of our key points to consider might be just increasing your cardiovascular fitness a little bit but at the same time if this person's coming to you and they're brand new to fitness they've not done anything before you've got to consider where um you know where where their head is at with it and where their self confidence is at with it. Yep. So it might be a point where okay, at this point we're probably you know in my mind I'm addressing this, yep. but I'm just going to soften how we have this conversation, and then over time we'll you know we can go deeper into those conversations because this is the first time we've met. Yep. So in my mind, like I'm not giving it any less credit than it is, but like I just see it as a bit of a game. Because yeah. it's kind of, well, I'm going to give you some cardiovascular work and I'm going to call it a warm-up. Yeah. You're think- going to think it's a warm-up and yeah. we're, we're just playing this game where I'm giving you, like, you know, I'm hiding stuff. I think that's such a fun way to help you organize your training, like, or the training that you're providing to someone because it makes, it, it like you say, it's a bit of a game, but it's also how can i do how can i create an environment where this person builds it builds trust with with between me and them yeah and that is a great way to do it yeah and and because also it's kind of you know if this person has come to the warm-up and they're they've come for a 40 minute to an hour session and they're four minutes in that they're not people aren't that stupid to realize well my heart rate is really high right now and we're only four minutes into a workout if they've already got like some self-confidence issues and like low self-esteem coming into that environment right there and then it probably doesn't need to be highlighted to them straight away. Yeah. So, and, and also they're, 
most people are not going to want to face that problem head on. Yeah. They are going to want to skirt around the edges a little bit to begin with, because that's just naturally how human beings work. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of, well, I've spotted it. I'm going to address it, but I'm not necessarily right now going to tell you that I'm addressing it. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a warm up to do. And it might even be a case of, you know, if I give somebody a 12 minute unwrap of a warm up, but like tell them it's a warm up. So go at it at a warm up pace. You might find that four or five weeks down the line, they're doing similar sort of warm ups and all of a sudden, they're doing an extra full round yeah. than what they were doing on weeks one or two. So straight away, like their efficiency to move around has increased quite quickly. Yeah. And throughout that process as well, I, I guess, as, as they are, as they're going through all these movements, do you, do you set a, an effort level for them? Do you say like... Yeah. So, you know, because I still say something that this is, this is a warm up, yeah. you know, so I set those expectations of, you know, we don't, you know, maybe using more than likely using an RPE scale and, you know, I don't I want you to move through, but I also say, you know, I kind of like, I quite like giving them some guidance and some feedback around this should be continual though. Yeah. So at no point over these next 12 minutes, should you really need more than 10 seconds rest as you transition between exercises? So you need to move at a pace that allows you to when you're at the end of one exercise, you can pretty much think you can go, you can get straight back on that rower. Yeah, yeah. Or you can get off the rower and go straight into this exercise. If you need rest, you're rowing too quickly. And, and that's where the rounds come into the fact that the, the fitter they get throughout this process. Yeah. The more rounds they yeah, do. Yeah, because like the, their RPE down. is what, what, what was at one point a six out of 10 that if you like to let's say let's maintain that same pace on a rowing machine as an example that's going to drop to a five yeah it's going to drop to a four yeah and then all of a sudden it's like well i want you to stay at six so in order for you to stay at six moving quicker we got to go up a little bit it's just mind blown i i quite i quite like like don't know i I just not not playing games because like that's definitely not the point of what we're trying of what we're doing but it's just trying to hide stuff where they don't know it, it, it it's going on when you're it, being able to help someone without waving it in their face yeah it's is yeah because nobody wants to come into the gym like they probably come they're probably turning up already knowing they're not in the greatest yeah. of shapes so they probably know that they don't need after three minutes of sat on a rowing machine on our first interaction to be like wow you're unfit do you know what I mean? But like, trainers that's not, do that's, that, man. Yeah, that's not helping anybody, is it? I hate that. But that, that's why people don't come back. I hate that. Like, if you're a personal trainer and you listen to this, the one thing that you have to do is give this person a reason to come back. Exactly. Like, I, just, I just see it as, especially on session one, I need, I need on session one for that person to leave that session feeling better about themselves than what they did when they first walk in. 100%. That is the main goal of that session. The amount of people that I have come to me and go, I've had a personal training in the past and it just didn't work and I've never wanted to go back to the gym since. Yeah, it's like, and they just bury me on session one and just like, they think, people think that's training. It's yeah. just like, no, because I'm just like, yeah, all right. It's sort of, we're, we're put, you've got, you've got a th- again, it's that mindset, isn't it? It's sort of, I get this person come in on day one I'm not thinking day one. I'm thinking, oh, like, where where are we going to be in two years if yeah. we just keep chipping away at this? It's it's actually ridiculous how much trainers I've seen come into a scenario like this and just think I've got to impress this person or I've got to show this person the the latest new exercise or I've yeah. got to show this person like a really hard session. Yeah, yeah. And it, the, the, part of that comes from like. The, the market dictates that everyone thinks they need a hard workout or everyone thinks they need to be dying to get something effective from it and i guess some personal trainers would fall into the trap of i've got to make sure this person leaves here yeah. feeling knackered so they feel like i've done something and it's like and it's for, for myself like i've needed to find a really good way to communicate what we're doing and why we're doing it so the person doesn't feel like they need to sweat and they need, or they need to, obviously they're going to sweat, but they need to kill themselves yeah. to get something effective yeah. from it. It's like, it's like when you went and did your bike license, like 
Imagine turning up on day one and the instructor's like, well, here's the most powerful super bike in the world. On you get. It's not even that. Like, like, <laughs> imagine All right. on your driving test, you're kind of, you're, you're like driving around the car parks that you were doing and the guy was like, well, that's shit. Yeah. Like your, your first thought is going to be like, oh, well, maybe, I'm, maybe this driving yeah, thing's yeah. not for me. Yeah. And I, ju- I just think there's a big difference between like coaches and trainers maybe like maybe we can use you can use different words whatever you want to call it but like some people just turn up just like yeah you're going to get a beast in for an hour and great is that really going to achieve anything or some people you turn up just like right we're going to teach you something yeah and i and i think i kind of i outline that in in when i get someone come to me and i kind of i explain that this is a process and that what we are doing is, yes, you've come to me as a complete beginner, but we are going to take you, we're going to evolve this process over time, which makes you actually enjoy it. Like, my first goal with anyone is you need to be, like, enjoying this. Yeah. And another thing that <laughs> that annoys the hell out of me is, like, trainers who on day one of a brand new client and let's say they're doing some sort of fitness session. It's like, come on, oh, 10 more. No. Like, why are you shouting at this person? Even like, alone, man. This person's got no self-confidence, real low self-esteem, knows that they don't know how to use a gym, and you're yelling at them. Why are you shouting at them? Stop yelling. Like, most people who come to you would love, and this is something I do, and, this is, and I think uh, this is something that other people can take, find a corner of a gym yeah, and train them in that corner. Yeah. Get them out of the way of people. Get them out of the way of people so they don't have to worry about that and they can just concentrate on what they're doing. The the one thing that I get is like once I get someone after like even maybe even two, maybe like 20 sessions or after a block of 10 or throughout the block of 10, depending on their confidence level, we do a session with me. They do that exact same session and it's a session that they can do in the corner of their gym Mm -hmm. or in a separate room where they don't, where they need minimal equipment and they can get a workout because the first thing is in like the first thing is confidence and enjoyment like those are the two things that you if you're someone who is going to a gym and is just starting out you're look you need to look for those things like what is going to give me a bit more confidence and what is going to make me enjoy this session and if you're a trainer you're trying to do the same thing with that person yeah because they're the two things that are going to keep people coming back it's the same reason to be honest with you it's the same reason i think i train now yeah like I train now to improve my confidence. Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact, like, if I've had a really good session, oh, I'm way more confident that day. Way more productive, probably. Way more, way more. Yeah, yeah. And if, in- if you leave a session like, well, I feel battered or that was a bit crap. Well, this is, so like, this is my thing of like, and this is a tangent, but this is my thing of you don't need to PR every week. You don't need to PR every session because if you're trying to chase PRs, you're going to hit failure. And if you keep hitting failure and you keep hitting failure, yeah. at some you're point or hit, another... You're going to hit really quickly. Yeah. But like at some point or another, that's going to start affecting you mentally and you're going to be like, I don't want to go to the gym. Yeah. I, I think for... Certainly if we're keeping less to like gen pop, like general public and general population, I, like, I think there's a real strong argument for like, do they really need to... I'm not going to say ever, but like, you know, out of 50 times, yeah. 50 sessions, they probably need to be experiencing success at least 45 of those times. Legit. Pro- probably more. 48, maybe. And this is where, and, and I think this is the, the, the next bit of like, when you do go in and you start training and you're a complete beginner to this, um, like we've already said, you're going you're gonna to do some kind of like knee dominant movement, which is like a squat, for example, a squat, um, a lunge, a leg press, for example, you're going to do some kind of hinge movement, which could be uh, either like a Romanian deadlift, a, a normal deadlift, or a kettlebell swing. You're going to do some type of push in. This could be like either a push up, this could be a kind of shoulder press machine, or a, like a half kneeling single arm dumbbell shoulder press. Then you're going to do some kind of pull in. This could either be like this this could be ring rows for example a single arm dumbbell row this could be some kind of even i know this is a bit further away but like even like going on a rowing machine you get to see how you move kind of 
in a bit more of a i guess dynamic setting but if you're if you've taken those exercises like we want to find a way to progress you and to continue to progress you for a long period of time so you don't need to go in and achieve everything within a week Mm -hmm. and that's the real hard bit i think for a lot of people who are starting out because most of these people probably have tried and failed to do whatever they want to do whether that's with a personal trainer or on their own so they've either tried dieting or they've tried going to the gym and flogging themselves and they're like this needs to happen now and i need to achieve my results and my goals now so that probably for you if you're listening or for you if you've got a client like this that's going to be a bit huge barrier to understand well actually the reason this doesn't need to happen now is because it one it, it it can it literally physically can and two because we need somewhere to always go so we can improve so we can achieve these wins so we can improve your confidence so we can get fair so we can get stronger and it just keeps going and going and going yeah i think a lot of people see they see they see the gym and they either see they either watch like bodybuilders on youtube they watch crossfit on youtube or like something else and all you see is like the extremes yeah. of what people are doing in some gyms just like oh well i need to be going and, and doing that like but we know that that's not the long-term training process and i'd also say kind of just lower your expectations a little bit so let, let's say you, you know, if you're seeking guidance from a, a good personal trainer, they'll obviously deal with that when it comes to writing a session. But if you're somebody who's maybe got a little bit of knowledge and just think, oh, well, I can maybe like start to try and create my own session, I'd probably say create your session, look at it and take two exercises out yeah. and, then, and then go and do it. Yeah. Just because just, in my mind, I'm thinking, right, one of the, you know, one of the biggest aims of at the end of this session is i want you to leave feeling like you can come back tomorrow and do it all again yeah 100 percent. because if you don't feel like that then it, it's too early like you need to be feeling like you can get up tomorrow and do it all again We've you can get up tomorrow much. and do it all again get up tomorrow and do it all again like it keeps the consistency really well like yeah. i think i think for a lot of there's nothing worse than having to do something like you don't want to do and a lot of the times you don't want to do it because like, if you're sore and you're achy or you're really, really tired because you went like too hard the day before and you can't go into the gym, even like two or three days later, like I remember when some people had just started back in the gym and I'm like, okay, well, we're going to do like a full body session just as your way back. Like se- even someone who's trained for years before mm. and they're like, no, 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 like I'll, I'll do the same body parts that they've always wanted to do. And I'm like, so you give i give them a leg session i take as much intensity out of it as possible and they're like oh i can't walk for a week yeah it's like well, you, that's not what we're looking for yeah mate i deadlifted on saturday for the first time in months because of my back and you know i've been deadlifting for a long time yeah and i did one set of five and two sets of three uh, like a set of five was at 100 the two sets of three was at 120 which both of them are below probably 40%. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, I think, especially, so, so for beginners who are trying to come into and learn the best ways to train, we've given you like, I've, I've, I lift, listed out some exercises which could be really good. And there are regressions and progressions for all of them. Um, you can find literally the regressions and progressions everywhere of like what I do, how to make it an exercise more challenging and how do I kind of make an exercise easier, for example. And that would always be like my first starting place is, right, let's start with the easiest options. Um, let's kind of, we've, we've given them a warm up. Where would you take them from, a, from that warm up? And th- this is like their initial session, but this gives them some kind of idea of like, and we'll explain how to progress this, but like gives them some idea of what to do. So you've gone through their little 12 minute AMRAP yeah. where they've got they've, it's a little bit of conditioning within that they've, they've mobilised some joints they've got their heart rate up and so on and so forth like what does your session look like after that um, well I'd probably start with something lower body so uh, more than likely hinge first yeah. um, just because I find people find it harder to understand yeah. so I would do it early on when their brain is still functioning and you know glycogen levels are not fully depleted yet 
So I'll do that early on. So I'll hinge first. Um, and then I'll either, depending on what like their local muscular endurance is like, I'll either move to the knee dominant, whether that's like some sort of goblet squat or something like that. Yep. Or I'll go to an upper body exercise just to give the legs a little bit of recovery. And then I'll come back to the knee exercise. Yep. So I'll either go like lower, lower, upper, upper, or I might go lower, upper, lower, upper. Again, just I like, to... I like that because it, it gives, especially beginners, it gives them some time away from that, that muscle. And like, yeah, I find especially if you, if, if I stayed on the, like the same body part as such, so lower body, for example, um, and we're doing this two exercises back to back, say we're doing two or three sets of that, like that person would be like dying from like yeah. that first or second set on that yeah. second exercise. I also find that if I've done, let's say, a couple of sets of hinging, if I, again, it's just like playing a game, they, some people really struggle to dissociate like hip and knee movement. Yeah. So like if I was to like, right, we're going to go from a hinge now to a squat and they're like, because they've been like used to hinging, they're just like, well, how the hell do I move my knees now? Whereas if I go to an upper body first, upper body second, and then come back to the knee, like, because it's their first time yeah they've kind of already forgotten how to hinge yeah, 100%. so it's just like well now i can teach you how to squat because you're going to forget what we've just done yeah because we've just taught you something else in between um i'd say i'd say the best thing you could do if you're doing this now i what i like to do so i'm going to say different for pts compared to um if a general public's walking in so if you're a personal trainer one of the things that i like to do is if I have a client and I'm trying to teach them how to move, um, I really go for somewhere between four to five sets. The rep range will be somewhere between five to six. And the reason I do that is it slows, it, it gives me four or five opportunities to change how they're doing something. So if they're squatting and they, they can't get it correct, it gives me four or five times to go, well, let's try. I want you to imagine you're doing this, or I want you to make sure you keep your chest kind of pointed forward. Like, gives me four or five times to intervene. Um, but if you're someone going in as a as general public, I'd say for the first like month, two to three sets on an exercise, and you could or you could follow the same process. But some like you don't want to be doing loads of sets, and you don't want to be going near failure. Like, look at it as practicing a skill. So if you do pick any of the exercises i listed your goal is to go in for the first month and master those exercises you don't want to get tired and it's not a it's not a way to kind of test yourself like cardiovascular wise you've done that within the warm-up now your job is to go right i need to learn how to move correctly and i'm going to try my best to do that Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what i'd say is every exercise is a skill your job in that first month is to probably master that skill yeah absolutely just try and learn how to do the exercises because then the, the weight, if you learn how to do them correctly, the weight will come quite quickly. Yeah. Um, days of the week, however many you have available to you, find a way to kind of make it work. I would definitely not advise anything more than four when you're first starting. But if you do want to go more than that, then that's fine. Maybe one of those days, if you are going or two of those days could be stretching, mobility work. Um, and then you could maybe split up of how you do things going forward definitely full body for that first month in my opinion and then maybe if you are doing that four sessions split to an upper lower and still having some like cardiovascular work within each of the sessions really yeah i'd I'd agree Full, full body sessions or like some sort of push pull upper lower i think is a great way for people to begin amazing um anything else um i I just think just reiterating points really of probably start slower than you think and i know you're gonna like get to the end of the first session and go i definitely could have done more but that's kind of the point like that's that's where you need to end that's where you need to be after the first five six seven sessions because then you will be able to do more whereas if on day one you just go in and get carried away and kill yourself you're going to be sore for a few days you're then going to miss a few days of training 
it then means your consistency is going to be out of whack right from day one so just like play the longer game slow it down lower your expectations and just you know look a little bit further into the future where where can i be in six months time as opposed to you know where am i where can you know how much muscle can i gain in one session just slow it down a little bit 100 percent um but yeah good luck if you do need any obviously any more help um you can email us info at realcoachingradio.co.uk um i will always put links to kind of our social medias and our websites um in the show notes so you can look there um thank you so much for listening this has been real coaching radio Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Um, I don't think I ever, ever put my YouTube link um, in the description. But if you are unsure on, like, any of these movements, I've created a whole exercise library. Um, at the moment, there's, like, 100 videos in there. There is soon to be around 300 videos in there. Um, when this releases, hopefully, they'll be up close towards 200, but we'll see. Um, I have basically been going through how to do anything and everything. Once i get around to it i'm going to split everything up into movement patterns so hinge motion squat motions um kind of and, and give you regressions and progressions for everything um i don't know if there's a place i can put documents um on my youtube but i'm going to hopefully try to create the regressions and progressions thing so people can see like okay i can go from this exercise once I've mastered the air squat, I can then go on to a counterbalance squat. Once I've done a counterbalance squat, I can go on to a goblet squat and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, I, I, I guess thank you so much for tuning in. If this did help you, please let us know. Um, like I said, you can email in info at realcoachingradio.co.uk or you can find us on social media. Um, you can find Mark at Mark Origin Series and you can find me um, at Hat the Body, Hat the Mind. Um, links are in the show notes in the description so you can find us there and kind of get to us through the show notes um, and find our Instagrams and social medias there. Um, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess this one's been quite interesting to record actually because beginners are all, come, come, come from all different walks of life in the sense of some beginners and people I'd still class as beginners, someone who's been to the gym um, or at least been trying to go to the gym for years, maybe is used to train when they were younger but hasn't trained for ages. Like I'd still always take a cautionary approach like, and, and, and take a few steps backwards than, than what they think they can do um, purely because it will help in the long run. Like You've always got to learn how to crawl before you can walk before you can run and i think that's the way i like to approach things is if we start a session and we're doing an air squat and you find that easy well you may find us within that same session doing a back squat but for example if i start you on a back squat and have to regress you to an air squat already you're going to be feeling pretty disheartened and you're going to be feeling like you haven't achieved anything so that's why i'd always start someone with an air squat and build my way up and that's my biggest advice is start with an exercise you think and you know you can do and then just build up and build up and build up. There is something beautiful in mastering the basics. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this has been Real Coaching Radio. Hi guys, my name's Charlie from Hat the Body, Hat the Mind. I have a collection of programs called Buildings and these are designed to help you build strength and muscle. I'll have three foundational ones. One of them is a glute program, one of them is strength and muscle and one of them is a foundational program for beginners. Now these are all focused around strength training, resistance training. Just for being one of the podcast listeners, I have given you a 20% discount off of these 12 week programs. So if you type in RCR20 at the checkout, that will give you 20% off any of the buildings and any of the programs that I have available to buy.